It is so hard to get anything to work. Oh, wait a minute. Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris. And today we're going to be going over the tape drive backup for a Commodore Amiga. Why a tape drive, Chris? Why would you even be considering using a tape drive when you have a GoTech and you have an Ethernet card and you have a, a network and all this other way of transferring files to a server or mounting SMB shares or running coffin? You have a vampire. Why? I'll tell you why, because I think it's really interesting that you can use a tape drive. Uh, the Amiga had one official tape drive from Commodore, I believe it was the A3650 or something like that. Um, it was a uh, DS150 tape, the big like super cassette tapes, the quick tapes, quick 150s. Uh, they were like these, but really, really big, hold 150 megabytes. This will hold 4 gigs. This was probably the cream of the crop for the Amiga. This drive was made in 1997 and this external model sold for 999 US dollars. And each of these tapes were approximately $50 each. And that was in 1997. Today, this technology can be had for pennies on the dollar. And I just thought I would do a video on how I worked it. So, as you can see right here, I wrote on here ID number 5. This is in a 3.5 inch external case. It is hooked up via a Centronix 50 to a DB25. That goes right into the back of the Amiga on the GVP uh, SCSI card. And that's it. That's the only device that's currently on the SCSI. It is not terminated because the drive has a jumper for self-termination. If I do put this on, the drive will give me an unexpected uh, SCSI status. So... So we're going to insert a tape here, just so it has something to read against. There we go. That way the SCSI drive can inquire. We are waiting for the unit to figure out what the heck it's doing. Now by all means, it is extremely slow, so don't expect massive uh, performance results. Okay, so we're booted here. and What I use is one of three tools. I have tested all three of these, and they they work with various strengths. So first off is your built-in HD backup, normally located in Sys Tools. And when you launch this, it has a very basic interface and a little bit confusing uh, because of the ancientness of it. Um, so what you can do is you can go to your options. You can see now there is a tape colon which is apparently the access of the tape and then you choose include and you have to set like your different directories to include and oops sorry oh my gosh like I said very basic program alright and then you choose what you want directory to backup hit the button it'll do a count you'll get a list after it scans the entire thing and, uh, yes, I really want to cancel. Didn't build the tree. I don't care. This is the worst one of them all. Functional, yes, but not worth a crap. Next is Amabac itself has a configuration where you tell it, when you go into backup configuration, when the program itself is loaded, um, you go into Amabac and you say that um, destination is going to be Amiga DOS file, the hard drive, floppy drives, or the tape drive, and you click configure tape drive and in there GVP SCSI device is my card controller and the ID number is 5 and you can say read your defaults it will look at the tape drive and it says my drive is a Sony SDT 5000 and the version number and it will fill in all of your information here at which time you can click use uh, in the same location the source that you're going to do like if you're going to do RAM hit it it's going to go to the tape drive and then you would say begin backup and that is Amabac 2.0 uh, Amabac tools is a hard drive utility uh, then you have Diavolo which is probably the best backup program this is freely available because you can't purchase it anymore so it came out under the bit rot protection there's your unique serial number 
that is included with the ADF file which you can clearly download for free on the internet. It is uh, actually on the Wayback Machines archive.org there is a Commodore Amiga ADF disk list which I'll try to put in the description if I remember and where you can download all the software that you can uh, basically the the owners of the software have said go ahead we're not selling this anymore it's freeware basically because there is no payment processing system or ability to have users register even if you wanted to give them money you can't so they gave it away for free a lot of programs are like that now for the Amiga which is kinda nice There's, you don't have to worry about pirating stuff anymore it's pretty much freeware um, so Diablo is flaky on my display um, when you open it up you will go up to the uh, settings and you're going to choose uh, you have many different settings and you have to save them afterwards so I'm going to go into streamer tape and you're going to notice nothing pops up well on my Amiga the SCSI lights inquiring and we're going to wait for it because it takes a little bit sometimes if I launch another program like Disk Master it'll give me a weird window and I can toggle back and then I'll see the window I need to which is crazy. So you can see it already filled in my GVP SCSI dot device because that's the only SCSI card in the system. Unit number five, and it even auto detected what it was. A Sony SDT 5000, the version number, it is a streamer tape. It is supported SCSI 2. It is a four millimeter DAT DDS1, but it's not, it is a DDS2. So we're gonna click down here on hardware to see exactly what it is. And as you can see, it is a DDS2 drive, but the tape that is inside is a DDS1 tape. All right, so we're gonna click cancel, cancel, and you can't just hit backup. Whoops, whoops. You have to go into backup settings, and then you will choose your efficiency, 7, 14, or 25 megahertz for the whatever level it has. So it's slow. So we're going to say fast, which is 7, seven megahertz is fast, which is it's crazy. Um, yeah, and then we're going to save our settings. And now I'm going to choose backup. And it's going to ask me for a path. And of course the device here is my DDS tape. I'm going to uncheck my floppy drive. And I'm going to add a directory because I don't want to back up the entire disk. So we're going to go directory and we're just going to say backup uh, AMA TCP. Okay, and it gives you a tree, and then you just highlight oops, everything you want to back up by clicking that little button, and it tells you it's 22, and it's one directory, and we say return, and it will do a count, 22 files, and we say start backup, and you can give it a title, and then say okay. This is not fast at all. There we go. Now it's backing up. 22 bytes. Watch how long it takes. It's not done yet. You see it. Sometimes you can see it flickering a little bit. Is it done? Oh, well, it's done. So it backed up the path and uh, didn't back up anything. Okay, well that's crazy. Let's do something larger. Let's do devs. I want everything. There we go. Return. That's a little better. 178k, 6 directories, 40 files. Start the backup. No title. Takes a little bit. Hard drive light starts doing its thing, and we run out of memory. Awesome. That's hilarious. I ran out of memory. And I have only 139 megabytes free and 778 chip. Okay, so we're going to try reading the catalog and see what the hell's on this tape. Well, it's reading the tape. I hear it. I don't see any SCSI activity. And I forgot how slow tapes were. Okay, so I just went into the tape settings and I clicked adjust. And it asked me for a tape and I tape was in there and it said it's going to nuke it. So it's testing various SCSI flags to see what is available on it. And we'll see 
what it does. Okay, so past that, it's doing set marks now. Testing fast location. Now we're cooking. When this is done, I have to remember to save the preferences so I don't have to do all this again. This light is misleading because it's solid, like your device will be locked up, but SCSI access is on the left. You can hear it clicking away. Boy, if that is fast, that's uh. something else. Five minutes later, we're on to testing direct seek. It finally finished. It took 10 minutes. Please note, I have 139 megs of RAM, 805 mega chip. SCSI light is now on. We're trying to back up a couple megs. If that. This camera is getting hot. Gonna have to play with the settings to see what's going on. It should be faster than this, at least should start. We got activity! We had activity! It is so hard to get anything to work. Oh, wait a minute. Retensioning tape. Did it finish backing up? Well, okay. I hear it running. Can you hear that? So apparently it was doing something when the SCSI light was just on. It is retensioning. I think it's cool. I mean, yeah, I know it's old technology and it isn't storage for shit. or reliable at this point with the age of DDS media or whatever. I mean, I know tapes have a good longevity if you keep them in a controlled environment. But still, I just think it's neat just to try and get these old peripherals working with these things. I know we got new cards and vampires and CD drives and all this fancy stuff for these old machines but I find it really interesting and quite fulfilling when you succeed in pretty much polishing a turd basically and getting these devices to work and that's kind of why I have been doing so many videos on the Commodore series lately because I have so much of it. So, we finished. I guess I backed up one directory and uh, it took a little bit of time. I was just impatient working on 2019 time frame, not uh, 1991 time frame. It worked. Uh, that was pretty much it. I was just wanted to show you that it was about the 90s, 97 I'd say this drive was. So, this was six years old at the time when this drive came out so I'm glad it's supported uh, and it works it's a bit a little slow as you I thought machine locked up so I was uh, having questionable thoughts about using this let's see if it can eject the tape making some clicky noises here and there we go so it does support it doesn't do synchronous mode it's an asynchronous uh, streamer tape I'm thinking about putting the CD-ROM back in I don't know if I want to do that one or the Yamaha external because uh, I really like that one so that's it on tape drives everybody and uh, we're gonna continue I'm gonna try to get the DLT going but this is the, the only video I could do or find, so I figured I would make one to show people that you can still use a tape drive on an Amiga. And that's it for today, and as always, thumbs up, subscribe, uh, click the bell up there so you get notified when I make another video. And uh, thank you again. I appreciate it. Take care.